everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. <laughs> Today, we have a whipping chat for you guys. If you are new here, hi. Welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and some other crafting-related content, and I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Let's all be friends. If you've been here before, hi, welcome. Um, if you do not know what a whipping chat is, uh, WIP, W-I-P, stands for work in progress. I will work on... Uh, this is Lady Leprechaun, um, and I will uh, link the unboxing for this up in the eye. Um, and you can work on whatever it is that you want to be working on, whether it is a craft project, um, a household chore. I have people tell me they like to listen while they are meal prepping or doing laundry, um, things like that. Whatever you want to do, there is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. Um... How are you guys doing? I'm pulling out some colors. I am using a new system to me. Um, shout out to Kel from Chris and Kel. A while ago, I had posted something about the Art Dot um, containers. And I don't know if I ever shared this story, like, officially with you guys or not. Um, I had posted about it in my story to see if you guys, like, what, what your thoughts were on it. Like, the little, like, round containers like this. And then Art Dot actually reached out to me. And they saw my story, and they mentioned something about, um, you know, we see that you are interested in our product, blah, blah, blah. I'm giving you guys, like, the total Cliff's Notes version here. But, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, and if you are interested in the product, uh, we would be interested in possibly having a partnership and moving forward. And I said, okay, so, um... This is something, in case you guys are curious, if you are somebody who creates content and you want to know how to handle certain situations or you're just curious about how things happen on the back end, and I will tell you this is my personal experience, this is nobody else's experience, um, and I'm sorry, I'm pulling out like a bunch of colors, I'm trying to multitask, but uh, the glare from the flash makes it a little hard to see. Anyway, um... They had said something to me, and I responded to them, and I said I wanted to know what the details were, what they were interested in, um, because sometimes when people, when companies want you to do a review of a product, they are very specific in wanting a short-form video, like a reel or a TikTok, or they want... Um, a YouTube video, or they want to post on Instagram, whatever it is, so... I asked them what they were looking for, and then I let them know, and this is something that I always say if a company reaches out to me in any capacity. Um, I will only move forward with any company, doesn't matter if it's diamond painting um, or otherwise, I will only move forward with a company as long as they allow me to speak freely and publicly my honest opinions. Um, and I know some people might think that, that's ridiculous. Who wouldn't let you do that? Well, uh, you'd be surprised. Um, I've had companies reach out to me from, like, dropship companies. And I expressed that and then never heard back from them. Or I pointed out that they had stolen artwork and they never got back to me. But I can tell you that Art Dot never responded after that. Um, so I have never worked with them. I've never purchased from them. Um, but that didn't leave a great taste in my mouth. That I said, sure, I'd love to move forward as long as you're allowing me to be honest with my subscribers and my followers. And um, so... That was a really long tangent to say that uh, Kel saw these round containers on sale on Amazon, not Art Dot, a different brand. They were on like a flash sale, and she knows that I had been discussing wanting to get the round containers. So, long story short, I got a 120 container, and I have half of it out on my desk right now. I just took the whole foam insert, and it's just the, the round bottles. Um... So far, I'm liking it. I don't love it as my main source. Um, two things. One is super, like, annoying, but one of my bottles, and this is just not it, but one of them came and it was, like, melted here. So even if I put the lid on, there's, like, a hole, which doesn't really bode well for 
being a holder of tiny little things. Um, and uh, the other thing is that I can't fit full bags of, uh, like, the large bags of drills. And I don't have tape. Well, I have tape now, but I have tape for a different reason now because all of my labels keep peeling off, so I had to tape them down to my washi, which is not a container issue. It's, like, the Diamond Art Club labels. Anybody else have that issue? You put them on a container and they just, like, migrate off. They just do whatever they want to do. Uh, anyway, so... Super long story short, Cal sent me the link. I bought a set of these, and I am testing them out currently, and I am enjoying them. Um, so, yeah, what is your guys' favorite storage containers? Mine are the Elizabeth Ward. I don't care if they're the real ones or the knockoffs. Um, for me, my only problem with the Elizabeth Ward ones is that sometimes I need more than one tray's worth of containers. Um, and... The last kit that I worked on with those trays, a lot of times when I have the bigger container, I will stand it upright, which is fine if I don't plan on going anywhere, but I like to be able to put the lid on and take it, and in those cases, I can't. So this is nice that it comes in like a zippered kit. Um, let me grab that so I can show you guys in case you care. Um, it's just this one has a bird on it and bright colors, and it just... Here's one half. Here's the other. These are pretty standard. You guys have seen these, I'm sure. But anyway, so um, I just had to a couple bags that didn't, I couldn't fit the whole thing. And so I just put the rest in the, the pouch in the front there. But this is nice because I can take it with me. But I will say, if you guys have been watching my channel this past week. I posted, as I mentioned, the unboxing for this. I also posted the post review for Train of Dreams, so if you would like to see that, I will link that one for you guys up in the eye. Um, that one was fun, you guys. I loved, I loved that kit. I mean, spoiler alert, you know, I feel like it's pretty obvious if I do or don't like a kit. I'm pretty vocal in general. But it was a lot of fun, um, and I hope that you guys enjoy that. I have, what do I have coming up? Um, I have an unboxing from Jolly Gem Shop. You guys, that was, that was a beautiful kit. I was very excited to get that, so I'm excited to share that with you guys. I also have, um some older videos that I filmed and just never published for some reason. Um, one of which I was planning on publishing before I worked on it, and then I keep pushing that project back because I keep getting um, sidetracked by new pro <laughs> new projects, um, which I feel like that's pretty normal. I always watch Lara, Diamond Paintings by Lara, like when she plans out, and I'm like, that's so amazing. Like, I wish I could do that. And not even be like, okay, I'm going to fully commit, but like even have like a plan. Um, I know what I'm doing next. I think I know what I'm doing next. Um, but this was one of those that I thought it would be perfect to work on this for St. Patty's Day, which in real time was yesterday. Um, and it's funny, my daughter, if you guys ever need to know, like, a couple random facts about my kid, um, if you guys have been watching the last couple videos, you know... Um, she loves cats, and it, just an update, I do want to mention that her and her cat Fiona are still married, um, even though Fiona has, is no longer sleeping in the bed, she's sleeping on the floor and has been replaced by two other cats, um, that's a different story, but, um, here's a picture of me and Fiona, in case anybody wants to see it, um, I, <laughs> you guys had such great comments on that video, too, um, but my daughter is a cat lover. She's a, like a crazy cat lady, and I love it. I love it for her. I don't love it for me because I'm allergic to cats. Um, and I'm not really like a cat person. Sorry, cat people. But um, I think the main reason I'm not a cat person is because I am just so severely allergic to them. Um, but she is. She loves cats. <laughs> she thinks they're the greatest things. It was funny this morning I went in there and I was like, Hey, baby girl, I was like, why is your wife on the floor? And she's like, well, um, I'm like, are you guys still married? And she's like, yeah. So, if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, um, my daughter 
Um, I, was that a whipping chat that I was talking about that in last week's whipping chat? I think it might have been. Um, if I remember to link it, I will link that one up in the eye. Let me make a note of that. So um, you guys can follow that story if you haven't heard it. She's a hoot, my, my kiddo. Marrying her cat. Mary Cat Whip. Um, so that's, that's how I make notes there. Anyway, but yeah, she has a cat and, okay, tangents. I'm all over the place. I'm a little discombobulated more than normal today. Um, we had originally talked about going up to 90s Con in Hartford, Connecticut, which, uh, is not close. <laughs> um, that would have been, uh... Like a five-hour drive without making regular stops and things like that. And so what we were going to do is we were going to go to 90s Con. And then I was going to get tickets and go to the Pod Meets World live in Hartford. Um, and I went back and forth with it. And I really realized that as much as I would love to be able to go, um, there's a few situations here. One, I don't like being around that many people. What was that? Uh, I just saw Shadow. Fun, fun. Um, and then the other thing is we would have to take our kid with us. And our daughter, as much as I love her, is not, like, the most flexible child. Um, like, she's not gonna want to wait in line no little kid is going to want to wait in line. I get that. But she's not going to want to wait in line for something that doesn't benefit her. And I had to make the difficult decision of, is it worth our time and money to make this trip to go do something that would have made me super duper happy, but there was a very high likelihood that I would have had to deal with some very difficult behavior, and um, I didn't want to take her and have her act the way I truly anticipated that she would, and then felt some sort of resentment that she ruined, like, one good thing for me. Um, I know that that, for somebody who is not in a similar situation, they might think that that sounds, like, petty or rude or whatever, but at the end of the day... My life is primarily dedicated to my child. <laughs> I don't have, like, yes, I have, like, this kind of me time, but I don't have, like, girls' nights or weekend trips or overnight trips with my Like, I don't do anything, really. I know it sounds like we do a lot of stuff, but I don't really do anything for myself. Um, and if you are a parent of a child of any age you know how important it is to take the time for yourself because um, I can't be a good mom to her if I'm, not, if I'm not in a good place for myself. And I just thought, okay, well, it's really not worth the risk. If it was something that was close by, that'd be different. But to spend five hours driving to Connecticut, to go to a con for hours and hours and hours, then spend the night and then get back in the car and drive another five hours home, like, that was just a huge amount of commitment. Well, let me tell you something. I am really, really glad that we didn't go. And not that I don't want to have gone. Um, because my brain somehow didn't register that the Pod Meets World live show was Sunday night. <laughs> And I was thinking it was Saturday night, so we were going to go up Saturday and spend the night Saturday after the the podcast and then come home Sunday. So I'm really glad that we didn't do that because there was no way that I would have wanted to drive from Connecticut to Pennsylvania overnight um, and then have my kid go to school today. So, you know, but I've been able to live vicariously through people's posts on Instagram and um all these fun little reels and posts. And um, so, yeah, I said to my husband, if there's like a smaller one that's more local, like we should test it out with her and see how that goes. Uh, I don't suspect that the cast of Pod Meets World or Boy Meets World is going to be showing up to a little rinky-dink one here in our state, but just to get a feel of how she would behave in um, 
that sort of situation, if that makes sense. So, but we ended up having a really wonderful week, and I'll tell you guys all about that here. But I hope that you guys are all well. Um, I don't know why I always turn the flash on when I'm recording, because I feel like I can't see anything. Uh, we are so far behind on all of our TV stuff. Um, what shows are you guys watching currently? Like, right now, we are actively watching all of the Law & Order series, which I have to say, um, that's one of those ones that if we get behind, it is so hard to catch up because there's three episodes in a night, and we can't ever watch all three right away. We have to, we usually get like one, maybe two in a night. But we also have Drag Race, which are all hour and a half episodes now. So that's four and a half hours of TV. We have Bar Rescue, which we haven't watched. We have Good Good Doctor, which we haven't watched. Um, and this is just shows that we watch together. So I also have um, shows that I watch. And... So when I am diamond painting and I am not listening to music or not listening to um, the Pod Meets World podcast, I am watching my 90 Day Universe. Uh, does anybody else watch 90 Day Anything? Let me know. Um, but I am a big, big fan of the 90 Day World. And I just finished catching up on the original 90 Day 90 Day Diaries, and Before the 90 Days. So I still have 90 Day Happily Ever After and 90 Day The Single Life on my DVR to catch up on. Um, and I feel like I'm never going to be caught up because by the time I finally catch up on one, then they release a new season of another one. And these are not shows that I watch with my husband, so they're only, like, watched when I am up here and crafting. And, yeah. So I hope that everybody had a lovely weekend. I am quite excited. I did a Walmart order for this morning. Um, okay. I went to do a... I wanted to see what the time frame was for a Walmart pickup or delivery order. Uh, we have Walmart Plus, so they don't charge for the deliveries. You still have to pay tip for the driver. But um, I wanted to see what time. So the earliest time slot I could get, and this was me this morning at uh, seven something placing the order the earliest time slot I could get was the 11 to noon that's fine I was like okay well I have to pick up my kiddo at school I pick her up um they get out of there 11 25 is when they release the kids um so that would be perfect to just swing by the Walmart as she calls it um on the way home and pick up our our food so I'm putting in the order and um, it tells me I have till 7.45 or I lose my, my time slot. I don't know if you guys have ever had to make an order with Walmart Plus or, or Walmart Delivery or I'm sure any other similar like grocery Instacart kind of thing. Um, so I am getting my order ready. It is 7.35. I'm like, I have exactly 10 minutes to find every single item and add it to my cart and check out. I'm like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, because I really didn't want to have to go to the market after drop-off this morning. That was the goal. The goal was to not have to physically go to the market if I didn't have to. So anyway, it is 7.44. And I'm like, phew, checking out. So I go to check out and it tells me, you know, edit your substitutions. The following items might be unavailable. They are low stock. And I'm like... Okay, so it's three items. It was the French bread. I was like, okay, the Italian bread will be a good swap. Um, another bread and meat. And I was like, okay. So I go and I do the substitutions. It is now 746 and it says your order cannot be placed. And I was like, what? Um, thankfully, it did place the order because I was, I was, I was not, I was going to be really unhappy if I had to wait a whole extra hour just because, like, they asked me about my substitutions. But then I was like, you know what's going to happen? They're going to email me about, hey, here are the items that need to be substituted. Um, do you approve or deny or whatever uh, while I'm recording? Thankfully, that was not the case. Um, oddly enough, none of those three items were the ones that were unavailable. Um, 
my pizza sauce. We're going to make a pizza casserole for dinner tonight. I don't know if it's any good. It came out of the cookbook. I let my husband go through the cookbook. And by I let my husband, I requested that he go through the cookbook so that I'm not the only one making the decision <laughs> on what to eat in this house. Um, and so that was one of the items that he chose for the week. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully that order will be ready closer to the time that we need to be there usually i find the walmart orders actually get done earlier than they say but this has been a very long tangent to just ramble on per usual oh when i was talking to you guys earlier about i have a bunch of content that i haven't posted i was talking about this i did a live on instagram the other day um and i am just curious your thoughts so please let me know your thoughts either way on what I'm going to ask you. So I have, um, I still have an unboxing from DIY Moon Shop. I filmed it. If you guys have been around for a while, then you may remember that I placed an order and I was one of those people that got their orders like right before the, the, the company went out of business. Um, and I'm very sensitive to the fact that, like, this is a real-life family who is affected. These are real-life people, and I'm not here to bash a company that went under. However, I have a mystery painting unboxing from them that has been sitting in my queue for a very, very long time. And I have debated back and forth whether anybody would want to see it or if that is something that, like... We don't need to worry about that because the company went under and like let's not let's not worry about it or if it's still something you guys would want to see. Um again, it's already been uploaded to YouTube, so I can't even add an additional video to it to be like, hey, this video was recorded prior to the company going out of business, blah blah blah. Um, but if that's something you guys are interested in, either you think, yes, you definitely want to see it, or, like, no, there's absolutely no reason for it, I would love to hear that down below. Um, you know, like, I'm not upset that I have content that I filmed that never went out, but I don't want to post it if it's not something that anybody has any interest in seeking out. Um, if that makes sense. And DIY Moonshop, the way they did their... Uh, mystery paintings was they released an image as a like black and white mystery um, prior to it being added to the general uh, catalog. So this was an image that was supposed to be turned into like a regular image for them to sell, but the business went under before that happened. Um, so it would only quote unquote ruin the surprise for anybody who purchased that uh, I don't know what month it was. Every month they rotated them, so they would have three options for each month. So let's say it was the January A kit from that specific artist. So it would only potentially ruin the surprise for, you know, a couple people if they haven't already looked at theirs, you know what I mean? So let me know. Um, but I hope that you guys are um, ready for the week. Uh, my kiddo... Are you guys' family on spring break? I feel like I've seen so many people talking about their kids being on spring break already. And our spring break isn't till, like, the week of Easter. Um, but we will be home. We will be doing nothing. Um, I might treat myself to, like, a night out of the house. Um, that would be quite lovely if I did that. But uh, let's talk about last week, you guys. So, um, last Sunday... Uh, Briar lost her second tooth, and she was very excited. The tooth fairy came to visit her, um, so she was very, very excited about that, and it was perfect timing, because we had a dentist appointment that week, um, which there was, like, a part of me that's like, oh, man, this tooth is gonna be in there when she goes to the, the dentist, and it's just gonna fall out while they, um, clean her teeth, but no. Um, I am, I can handle certain things, but I am not, I... Like, please don't ask me to pull your tooth. <laughs> I, no, I don't, I don't want that. I also have had some, like, traumatic incidences with that in my own life. Like, I clearly remember my dad tying a string around my tooth when I was a kid. 
and slamming the door shut so it would come out. Now, I don't know. Um, I don't know how when they tied a string around the tooth that that itself didn't make the tooth fall out. And if they needed to slam the door uh, to make it fall out, then maybe it wasn't that loose to begin with. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but she's cute. She's very excited and she's got... Uh, the other tooth that she lost, the a grown-up tooth already came in, um, and the grown-up tooth for this one is right behind it, uh, so she keeps, like, l giving me updates, I'm like, I, I can see, I can see that there's still no tooth there, Briar, <laughs> I see you when you talk to me, I see you when you smile, I see you all the time, kid, um, but this is such a funny thing for, like, a kid to be, like, they're so proud, so proud of the fact that they're like, look, a tooth fell out of my mouth. It would be so different. If it was an adult, we would be like, huh? I don't want that out of my mouth. <laughs> but then I was like, uh. Anyway, did you guys know that you have a 6-year molar, 12-year molar, and then your uh, your wisdom teeth? Did you know that? I didn't know that there were that many molars. I'm like, how is that possible? Um, it's all good. It's all good. I'm going to take a sip of my, my coffee. Mm -mm -mm. But um, we stopped at Michael's. To get something for my husband, he did a pop, and I had a crafty recommendation for him, and it actually worked out really well. Um, and then we, what else did we do? Oh, we went to Red Lobster for dinner, and I was so excited because I think that was like the first like real meal we had gone out to in a while. And I am not somebody who is like, oh my gosh, I want to eat every meal out. Um, but when I have been cooking, I don't enjoy being in the kitchen. If you're new here, um, or you're newer here, I absolutely hate cooking. I hate having to make the decision of every meal for every person in my house for the rest of my life. Um, I hate, I just hate doing all of it. And then being in the kitchen gives me so much anxiety and I have to plan things out based on our, our, our life and our schedule. Like when our kid has ice skating days, I have to have something in the crock pot or something that can come like right out of the refrigerator. Um, like the other day we picked up my husband after, um, he was done work and I didn't have like a big meal prepared. I just got a bag of like the prepared tortellini, like the cheese tortellini, like the Butoni brand or whatever. I did that, a container of like store-bought pesto. And I just came home and all I had to do was wait for the water to boil. And it then was like 10 minutes to have dinner. Bought a loaf of bread, sliced it in half, put the Trader Joe's garlic spread. You guys, that stuff is amazing. Um, but that was some sprinkle cheese in the oven, and so I had, like, a fresh ready-made dinner in, like, a couple minutes. I don't have a whole lot of those kinds of meal ideas, so if you do, please let me know. Um, preferably not chicken, though, because I hate chicken. Um, which, speaking of chicken, um, Tyson's, the chicken brand, they make delicious plant-based nuggets. Um, which I know some people might think it's weird that an actual chicken company is making plant-based nuggets, but at the end of the day, it's really nice to be able to buy, like, let's say my daughter some chicken nuggets and me the plant-based nuggets at the same time from the same company and know, you know, the flavor palette or the quality or whatever it may be. So for me, I love the plant-based spicy nuggets. There are three targets within, um, like, 30 minutes of me, 35 minutes of me, and only one of them carries it, and they don't have any more in stock, and so I sent Tyson an email, because I was worried, like, did the product get discontinued, like, why, why can't I find it anywhere, do you know where I can find it, and they wrote back to me pretty quickly, um, and let me know this is actually a newer product, and it certainly has not been discontinued, they don't actually see any stores in my general area that are carrying it but they will pass it along that there are local customers that are in search of this so hopefully that means they'll restock them soon but I love the plant-based nuggies and I think um if you've ever had a chicken nugget a faux chicken nugget you know they are not all created equal some have the taste and um texture of actual chicken and I know there are some people out there who don't understand why people who are vegan or vegetarian would want something that tastes or resembles a meat product. And it's like, well, here's the thing. Um, 
a lot of people who are vegan or vegetarian that did it because they want to um, save the animals and things like that, they, they gave up things that they loved. And they're not saying, nobody's out there saying that, like, if you eat this shredded mushroom that it's going to taste just like pork. But it can still give you that pork quality um, or a faux chicken nugget. And I'm all for it. Like, I'm all for it. I'm not a vegetarian by any means, but I can't. Chicken is just one of those things. I have a really hard time with it. Um, texturally, I am also one of those people that is super paranoid that I don't care what the thermometer is saying. Like, I am, I have to overcook the crap out of chicken for me to feel like it's safe to eat. If you bring me some juicy chicken, I'm gonna send it back. Because juicy chicken to me feels like mm, that's not cooked enough. I get really freaked out and then I work myself up and I also have texture issues. That's a different story. But, um, so I, long story short, I love that I have a plant-based nugget that gives me that same quality. And I've had them with my family, like my, my husband and my daughter have both enjoyed them. Um, and neither one of them have been like, this isn't real chicken. I mean, like my husband knows, um, that it's not actual chicken and he's fine with it. He... He's getting more used to the plant-based swaps that I do from time to time. And I've I've made it clear. Like, I'm not trying to replace all meat in our house. But it is nice to have an option, um, especially, like, a high-protein option that doesn't include actual meat. Um, and also, like, if I had to go vegetarian tomorrow, I would be able to do it. Now, I don't think my husband would be able to do it quite... I think he'd struggle not having meat. Um, and he's agreed with that. But, you know, anyway, um, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, I had to pick up some Tums for my husband on the way home. And, um, he's like, well, I'll just stop at the market, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, can we just stop at the Target real quick? And I was like, I'm going to just wander. You guys, it was just a few minutes, just a few minutes, but enough minutes for me to do enough to. <laughs> And I went in and I got myself a strawberry shortcake t-shirt and I uh, got um, just a couple things. But I was able to go and look at the things I wanted to look at without being, um, without having to like deal with my child being like, but I want to go to the toy hall. I want to go do this. I want to go do that. And um, so it was nice. I enjoyed that. I, to me, like if I had time to just do whatever like I dream of just wandering around Target it's been so long since I've done it um although the last time I went to Target I was a bit disappointed in like the fashion stuff I don't know if it's because I was the, the Target that I was at but I love like clothing at Target and I feel like the one that I was at didn't have a big selection of clothes in general but like especially not plus size and then the plus size stuff that they did have was, I don't know, very like matronly. Um, this particular color, I don't know why, but for some reason there's a ton of dark green in this. And um, my guess is they just, the bags just, when they were putting them in the machine, they just, I need my tweezers. Where are my tweezers? Anyway. Um, 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 um. Also, fun fact, you guys know we are dye-free, um, which went to a bakery last night, a local bakery, and I don't sus expect ever for, you know, a small business to have uh, dye-free options for us. However, this particular... Um, bakery usually has a couple things that are like chocolate peanut butter that don't have dye in it usually just like a plain cupcake every single cupcake every single cupcake had something that had artificial coloring in it the chocolate cupcake had those little um like mini cadbury eggs in it and the vanilla cupcakes or the coconut cupcakes had little um white and pink pieces for like bunny paws um and then one had a, a a chick a baby chick on it, and like it just it was very frustrating um, taking my kid to get a special treat, and then realizing like oh there's like nothing here for her um, because it's not usually like that. That was that was a bit disappointing. She 
got a coconut cupcake and they took the fondant pieces off for us. Um, but still, it just, it just sucks. Um, did I put an extra one down? Yeah, I did. Is that the right color? Yes, okay. Um, anyway, but Haribo, the gummy bear company, if anybody is curious, a lot of their seasonal ones are dye-free. So they had the, um, hearts for Valentine's Day, they had the candy canes for Christmas, all of these are dye-free. I just want to know if they can make so many amazing seasonal dye-free options. Like, why can't they make their regular gummy bears and worms dye-free? I just, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but yeah. And our kiddo got to have a snack at school today, so I put some dye-free candy in her little snack pack. Um, I'm very curious to see if and how much she ate, um, because she wanted, like, a whole damn snack box. Um... And I have a feeling she ate, like, four Cheez-Its. <laughs> um, anyway, I uh, took her to school the next day. Um, told me she took... Oh, then we had skating in the evening. I was like, what does that say? And then Tuesday, she had those spring photos. And I talked about this in a previous women chat that I'm like, what is this? Why do we have multiple school photos? I don't understand why if we're doing class photos, why don't we do class photos when the kids did their fall photos? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Well, I caved and I bought, I bought the thing. I was like, if it's going to just be like a class photo, I don't know any of the parents, um, of kids in our class well enough to be like, listen, if I threw you a couple bucks, can you just send me the digital? I'm like, I'll go get it printed. Um, and it wasn't super expensive. Like, it wasn't, like, the first one where you had to pick, like, the full-on photo package. But then she tells me, oh, yeah, I did a bunch of solo pictures, too. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, they had me, like, practicing my poses. Can I show you my poses? And I was like, okay. Now, I don't know if these were poses they had the kids doing while they were sitting down. But it sounded like she legit took her own separate photos. I have no idea. Um... I also don't understand why we have so many school photos. And why why are school photos so expensive? Um, what is up with this drill? Am I just off? You guys, this is my first time doing one of the new Diamond Art Club kits. Um, if that tells you anything. Um, and the grid on this is so much smaller than the old ones. Like, I feel like there's, like, no leeway. Uh, of course, it gives it a nice finished look that everything is really snug together. But for somebody who's not the most precise placer, it also feels like my drills look super sloppy and I have to keep readjusting them. But um, overall, I'm enjoying the appeal, visual appeal of this canvas. So hopefully it works out in my favor. Uh, what do we do? Um, and then she had a dentist appointment. So like I said, she just lost her tooth Sunday and then Tuesday she had her dentist appointment. She was very excited. She likes going to her dentist. Um, it's a pediatric dental clinic or dentist office, and it is so nice in there, you guys. It is, everything is fresh and new, and, like, everything is really well maintained. They have a whole little section of books for kids to read, and then, of course, they get their little prize at the end, and she was very, very excited because they have a little, uh, like, one of those, like, quarter machines with the animal inside the little like, clear, I don't want to call it an egg, but the things you get out are, like, quarter machines, like, the market and stuff like that, but they give the kids the coin. Um, it's a special coin. It's not an actual quarter. So she got a little axolotl. She was very, very happy. Um, and then she, we, I told her to replace her toothbrush with the one that the dentist's office gave her, and she comes over to me and goes, Mommy, I, I can't figure out how to turn the toothbrush on. I'm like, it's a manual toothbrush. Mind you, she's using a manual toothbrush right now. The, the toothbrush that she was using up until her dentist appointment was also a manual. So I don't know why she thought, like, the dentist was giving her a fancy electric toothbrush. Um, it was not, but she, for some reason, thought it would be, um, which made me giggle. Um, kids are, kids are hoot sometimes. Sorry, I've got a piece of, see, there's more of that green. And pull my big trash out. You guys, this is like my lifetime trash container. And it's almost full. I guess. 
I don't know why I didn't just grab the tweezers again, but... Hi, Lindsay. Um, anyway, so she loves going to the dentist, and I appreciate that because, obviously, that's not a fun place for most kids. But she does a pretty good job, and she hasn't had any, knock on wood, any issues. Um, we will... It's weird to think about it, but we have to make an appointment. I think they said, like, probably next year with orthodontics. My daughter is more than likely going to need um, a palate expander, uh, which I had one. My husband had one. Did you guys ever have them? They are not the most fun thing ever. If you've never had one, it's, like, basically like a retainer attached to the roof of your mouth. And there's an opening between the left side and the right side. Now, listen... I had mine 20 something years ago and I was like 13. So like almost 20 years ago, I had my 18 years ago, I had mine. Um, so the technology may have changed, but there is a tiny little key that goes in a little tiny metal piece in between the two sides that are attached to the roof of your mouth. And you put the little key in and you crank it. However many times a day, they tell you to do it, and it slowly spreads out further and further and further, and it stretches and it expands your palate so that you have room for your teeth to come in. Um, so I'm not looking forward to having to talk to them about that at this age already, but her teeth are already really snug together and they're baby teeth, and so when the adult teeth come in, there's not going to be enough room for them. And then likely they need braces after that to straighten them super fun like it's so weird to me that we are talking about this already but I have a friend whose daughter is I want to say she's like two or three years older than Briar and already has braces I'm like geez I'm like I, I feel like I didn't have enough I still had so many baby teeth in third grade or however old that little girl is um but yeah it's just weird it's just weird and I'm not ready I'm not ready um, I love doing Hannah hair. I'm just gonna put that out there. It's always so beautiful. Also, you guys, this is my first kit doing, um, with the fairy dust drills in it. I have some in my stash. I've just never worked on any of them. So I'm excited to finish this up and share all my thoughts with you guys. Are you guys fans of post reviews? I am. I, I like to hear what it was that somebody liked or didn't like about a kit. Um, not necessarily every kit that that person does. Um... You know, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I'll watch them for ones that I have no intention of ever buying just because I think the kit's cool looking or um, I like the creator or whatever. I don't know. Just let me know. What do you guys think? I am extra rambly today. I feel like I'm extra rambly all the time. I don't really have a non-ramble speed, but I feel like I've spent the majority of this time talking about nothing. Um, anyway, we, and we went to one of those like build your own pizza places for lunch and um, that was... That was interesting. Um, I don't know why. Like, she loves the idea of it, but she never does well when we go to one. And it's not like she doesn't like pizza. Um, I don't know, my hair is stuck to the canvas. Downside to being a blonde is it blends in real easily. But, um, yeah, so we did that. And then, um, oh, you know what? The day before, was it the day before? I don't know. Whatever day it was. I had actually called my mother-in-law because she lives near where my dentist, the, my kid's dentist is. And I was like, hey, are you going to be around? We would love to come visit. And my daughter has been talking about how she misses her grandmother and she wants to spend time with her and blah, blah, blah. And um, I, she unfortunately was unavailable, but she was free a different day. So we actually ended up going down another day. I think it was the day before and just hanging out in her apartment for a little bit. And then we went home and picked up my husband and... Um, did all those things, but she was really excited. Um, my mother-in-law's dog passed recently, and I, this is gonna sound awful, um, but I am, again, I am severely allergic to cats and dogs, to the point that, like, sometimes even on multiple allergy medications, I still have trouble breathing, and I'm gonna always prioritize my well-being, like, that's just how it is. If I'm having trouble breathing, it's time to go. Um, and so it was nice being able to know, and I took an allergy pill beforehand because I didn't know how much dog hair would still be in the apartment and things like that. And I just, it was nice knowing that I could go there and I could actually sit in her apartment for more than a couple minutes without struggling. 
Um, of course, my daughter had a blast. She loved it. She loves hanging out with her grandmother. Um, but yeah, so what else did we do this week? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday was a fun day, you guys. So I took her to school. And then I immediately went to the chiropractor, um, which was awesome. I needed to go. I could feel like I usually go like once every four weeks. Uh, I'm just in like a maintenance plan now. I don't go for anything specific. So I go and I get adjusted and then I go on the decompression table where they stretch me with, I'm at a hundred and something pounds now that they stretch me. Um, but one thing I had seen like online, um, people talking about, you can get like an ear adjustment and basically what it does is it just kind of like shifts the ear tubes, which sometimes when the tubes are a little bit out of whack, that's why you're getting ear infections. Um, and so I was like, hey, is this something you can do? And she's like, I don't, but the other chiropractor does. And so she came in and like did a little ear adjustment, which they don't do anything internal. They just kind of like externally like move your ear around. Um, and I was like, I'm just, I'm just desperate for relief. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, I have been dealing with um, long COVID for two plus years now, I think, and I've just been getting, like, chronic ear infections, um, and I, I have them all the time, and if I don't have an ear infection, my ears hurt, if they don't hurt, they itch, um, and it's just one of those things that, and I have gone to an ENT, and I have gone to my primary doctor who really didn't care, I'm not gonna go into this, because this is things I've talked about before, but I was like, if I can try something that might give me a little bit of relief, I'm gonna try it, so, um, you know, I have no thoughts on it, yes, like, yet or not, so, um, but anyway, did that, and then one of the moms from my kids' class sent out, like, a blast email, and was like, hey, we're gonna go to this playground at this time, everybody's invited, and we went, and it was Briar and a couple of her classmates, which was super, super fun, um, it's fun watching her interact with these kids because for the most part, with the exception of like one kid, she hasn't socialized with any of these kids outside of school. Um, and honestly, it's not for lack of trying. I have contacted multiple parents via email to say, hey, our, our kids are friends. Let's have a play date. And then I don't hear back or... Like, the one girl in the beginning of the school year basically told me that she wouldn't be free until the spring. And I was like, uh, okay. Um, which, you know, might be true. I have no idea. But it's still just a bit frustrating when your kid, like, wants to play. And I can't even get the parents to email me back. Like, I'd rather you just be like, hey, playdates aren't our thing. Or, like, you know, I don't want people in my home. Um, and maybe other people are like that. And I don't want... I. <sighs> Like, I want when she grows up for our house to be, like, a safe place for her and her friends to come. But, like, at this age, I don't want to be responsible for somebody else's kid. Does that make sense? I, you know, I think it's a little bit different when kids are a little bit older. But I just, I don't really want, I know how difficult my child can be at home. I don't want to have to be able to be responsible for somebody else's kid at this age. Um, so I always try to make it in a neutral location, like going to the playground or going to the library has a really great play area. Um, and I think that just some people just hear the word play date and they just immediately are like, no, nah, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, but it's a shame. So hopefully I'm going to email the one mother again because my kid asks all the time to have a play date. And like we got invited to her birthday party and went So like, obviously the mother knows how to contact me um, because we spoke for the birthday party. But after that, we picked up my husband. Um, we had a quick dinner. And then our public school system, there are like four or five elementary schools in our school district. And then there's one middle school and one high school. And... One of the elementary schools was hosting this uh, STEM night party thingamabob um, that all of the elementary school students were invited to. So she was like, I want to go. My daughter is really, really into um, science. And 
sorry, there is something that just fell, got stuck on my canvas. Um, really interested in science and all things STEM. If you don't know what that is, science, technology, engineering, and math. Sometimes there's an A, making it STEAM, which includes art. If you guys have never seen the books, The Rosie Revere Engineer, it's from, there's a series called Ada Twist Scientist, and it's about the, the they're little kids. And Ada Twist is the scientist. Iggy Peck is the architect. Rosie Revere is the engineer, and they are all best friends. They are, like, I think, like, third graders or something like that. It's an animated series. It's on Netflix. It's also a book series. Um, and they're not, like, chapter book kind of series, but they're the kind of books that, like, each one of those characters has their own book, and it's about that topic. So, like, the Rosie Revere engineer is about engineering and what engineering looks like through the eyes of a kid and... It's very, very cool. We really like the series. My daughter really loves um, the books. I don't want to put that there. I have one black drill that's missing. Um, and so every single teacher at this event was dressed up like Rosie Revere. If you can't guess, Rosie Revere is dressed up like Rosie the Riveter, but on the little kid version. So she's wearing like denim overalls and knee-high socks, and the red bandana, and so it was super cool, there were like 14 stations, you had to go through to each station, they were all STEM-related, um, some of them were like working on reading, and some of them were working on math, and they were just these different skills, and they had these little punch cards, and if they did every single station, they got punch cards, they got a, a punch at each card, or at each station number. Then you would take your full punch card, and you would bring it over to uh, the very, like, where you first started. And you got your own copy of Rosie Revere Engineer to take home. Not only that, if you did some additional survey, which my husband filled out the survey, um, then you also got to choose a second book. So we left this science fair, which was completely free, um, with a giant, like, plastic bag full of activities we got one that i can't wait to do with her um it's with dominoes but you like it'll tell you like it lays out the the shape of the domino train but it wants the values to be certain things so it could be like six so you have to find a domino that the two numbers add up to six so a five and a one a four and a two whatever it is but then Let's say you have four and two, and then the next number is seven, so you know you have to find the domino that's a two and a five, so it equals the seven. It's very cool. I think she'll really like that. She's super, super into math. Um, it was really sweet. We had to write a letter to our hero, and she picked uh, the same grandmother I was talking about earlier, and... Um, you know, like, my husband's over here, like, okay, let's just make bullet points. And I'm like, no, they have to, like, literally write a sentence. And the sentences didn't have to be heavy duty, but that's what she's working on right now in school is sentence formation, so it made sense. But they needed to have age-appropriate activities that would work for both a kindergartner and a fifth grader, because it's elementary school. Anyway, we had a great time. Uh, it was very long. There were a couple stations that required you to do... um things that were time consuming but there was no space for you that was like my digit my biggest down downside to this event um and also I feel like they should have put painter's tape on the floor in like arrows because they gave you this map but I had no idea where we were going and I couldn't figure out how to get myself around while well, everybody was trying to go to the same place at the same time. So you would get to certain stations and you just have to sit and wait forever. Other ones were like, hey, here's a packet. Take it with you. Have fun. And we're like, thanks. Um, you know, so I'm excited. I, I love anything that encourages my daughter to want to love the love of learning. Um, and she is really, really into like science and things like that. And I think there needs to be more encouragement especially of young girls in the field the stem fields um you know she wants to be a vet which is a doctor which is a science field but she also is really interested in things like space and um she wants to learn about birds and i just encourage her like you want to learn about it let's go to the library let's get a book let's ask the librarian if she has any recommendations on age appropriate books also um i talk to brandy from diamond artisan all the time about like the little quirky things my kid says and then doesn't say and now I'm like heartbroken and they're like like Walmart she doesn't call it Walmart anymore she calls it Walmart now um but one of the things that she currently says is she keeps talking about the red jays and then I'm like cardinal and she's like oh, oh yeah, I know mommy sorry and I'm like it's okay you don't have to apologize 
But now I'm like, man, when she starts calling it, it actually calling it a cardinal instead of a red jay, like, I'm going to be so sad. It's such a sweet little, I love listening to her say that. But anyway, um, did I pull out a color I didn't need? It seems like I did. Um, the next day was uh, school, and then we had to switch our private lesson up because there was a hockey tournament. So we skated on Thursday, um, and then I had to have the coach look at her boots for me. Um, her skates are starting to break down, which I didn't think was possible at this level. Um, and I, you know, and she's like, I'm gonna be honest with you. She's at the end of like, she's going to outgrow these very soon anyway. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to get her a new pair of skates, but she also wants me to get a spinner, which is just a flat thing you put down on the ground that they work on their spins. Um, the problem is I did not know there were so many different kinds of spinners. There are like plank shaped ones, there are square shaped ones, there are round ones. There are some that are metal, there are some that are plastic. I don't know what surface they all work on because some of them work on like hardwood. Some of them, you know, like don't. I'm just like, <sighs> so I have to figure all that out. I, I feel lost because I have no idea. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and I also, she's like, oh, just pick up a used spinner on eBay cool 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 but like that was not enough information so i'm gonna go back to ebay again and see if i can find one that seems like a decent price i've been eyeing a couple but even the used ones aren't inexpensive um and i really don't know the difference i think she needs one that has more width to it because she's like not understanding the concept of like her body needing to rotate um when she does spins so she needs to really nail those two foot spins how are we on time um so Friday, um, we didn't have our regular lesson because we made it up on Thursday. Um, I don't think we did anything. So I think we went to dinner, but we live in a tourist area and we found out that I want to say my husband said it was like the New York schools. A lot of them are off. So they're like busloads of people that are here. Uh, we are fast approaching the park opening for the season. Um, if you guys didn't know, we live near Hershey Park, which is, yes, Hershey's a real place. Um, no, it doesn't smell like chocolate all the time. Um, but the streetlights downtown are all in the shape of Hershey Kisses, which is pretty cute. But when Hershey Park itself opens, the retail uh, part, which is called Chocolate World, um, their hours extend. And um, just being in Hershey for anything when the park is open... Uh, there's just a lot more people. And there was like a cheer festival or cheer competition or wrestling, some competition. So there were like young people everywhere. Um, but we had a very, very eventful weekend. Um, it was super, super fun. My daughter got her very first Polly Pocket. I got it on a really great deal on Amazon. Um, in the last couple weeks. And it's just kind of been sitting there waiting for me to give it to her at the right time. But I thought something pretty self-contained would be good for her for, you know, like when we're in the car. Not in the car, because Polly Pockets have little pieces. But if you guys know anything about my daughter, it was the Polly Pocket cat sushi restaurant one. So it's in the shape of a cat. There's a little, like, sushi restaurant on the inside. You guys, this thing could not have been more catered to my child if I tried. She loved it. We also took the time to go to, um, what's it called? Tractor Supply. They had their baby chicks in and we went and she got to see a ton of baby chicks and they only had a couple ducks and they were all snuggled together. It was so cute. You guys, she loves ducks. If you didn't know that, ducks are like her number one bird. It's usually ducks and cats. Those are like the big things she's talking about on a regular basis. But we did that, and there was a woman with a dog, uh, I don't know, Pitbull, Rottweiler, one of those kinds of breeds. And she, so they have those stations where you can wash your own dogs. And she was sitting in there talking about, oh, I, my dog's just really playful. Listen, there's a difference between your dog barking because they're, like, having fun and wanting to play with other dogs and things like that. And your dog basically growling at everyone coming by. And it was, you could see how uncomfortable a lot of people were because 
this woman kept trying to play it off like her dog was just super, super playful. But in reality, everybody was like, this dog seems very aggressive. To the point that she ended up outside and not waiting to get her dog washed. But like, I love, I love dogs. I think dogs are great. I'm just allergic to them. But if your dog can't be around other dogs and people without it seeming like it's going to attack, then maybe don't take them to a very public place. Um, just my opinion. But we did that. We got some barbecue. We just had a really, really excellent day. Uh, weekend and we went to the outlets we got a bunch of stuff done I'll probably give you guys more information on that next week because I am very quickly running out of time I think I've already hit the hour-long mark um, but if you guys made it all the way to the end leave me a dog emo leave me an animal emoji let me know you made it to the end uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like this or nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up one real life one virtual make sure you guys hit that subscribe button come Join the Sparkle Squad. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time. And I record when my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Bye.